Changes are happening aplenty at Manchester United at this moment of time. We spoke about the reshaping of Eric Ten Hag's staff and the leadership team above him. You can check out our video in the top right corner after this one. Today, however, the United Twins need to speak about how both the aforementioned and additional changes accompanied together may create a better Manchester United overall. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. Make sure you're hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new to CM22 ENT if you're new, and sharing to your friends and frenemies. Out in June and early July, it was announced that first the Carrington training ground was to be modernised with an investment of £50 million put towards the project. On July 2nd, the communication department also revealed that the Old Trafford Tunnel would see a redesign. Both projects have already commenced, with the tunnel works due to be completed before the 24-25 season commences. In that specific post regarding the tunnel, deliberate language was used, and I quote, The objective is to create a performance environment that will inspire and motivate our men's, women's and academy players on match days. The similar premise can also be utilised for non-match day experiences when it comes to Carrington down the line. That quote is what the theory of change is all about. But how does the theory of change relate to Manchester United and why should us fans care so much about it? Now we're gonna get scientific here. Uh, the theory of change essentially explains how a specific set of activities can lead to desired outcomes or intended impacts in the long term. This can also be associated with Sir Dave Brailsford, who has worked closely in carrying out an in-depth review of the club from top to bottom. For many years in different sporting scenarios, he adopted the concept of marginal gains, which means essentially that if you improve everything by just 1%, those small gains will combine to affect exceptional improvement. So going back to the quote revolving around the Old Trafford Tunnel, that is a singular project with a clear objective set. Ultimately, when you combine everything happening in conjunction to that singular project, Carrington, the reshaping of the club's footballing hierarchy, coaching changes, an eventual new stadium, new signings, etc. It creates a momentous shift culturally. And as we know, that is probably the first step to creating a successful operation in any walk of life, especially sport. You know, in preparation for this video, for our discussion, Cappy, I part read an academic article about how dopamine neurons can create specific reactions. And the part I'm thinking of specifically is how those neurons react to rewarding actions or signals as the article referred to them as. There was a suggestion which stated that dopamine neurons are not just triggered by reward consumption, which is basically the brain understanding actions it would take for rewards to follow. Learned behaviours, if you may. In, in the case of what the article called reward prediction error, that study showcased that dopamine neuron reward signals can also adapt, depend on the difference between the received reward and the one that was predicted. Neurons are ecstatic when a cue indicates an increase in future reward value. The opposite, if there is an indication of a decrease in future reward value and little to no effect if there is no indication of change at all. Refer that now to Manchester United and how minor or major changes could impact new and existing players, coaches and, and staff in general. Seeing positive changes, brand new environments to work in, these once again small or large changes could provoke a chain reaction that creates a perfect synergy throughout the football club. An environment that no more is segregated but forever connected as one. A club that may adopt the characteristics of success which in turn will produce victories all over the board. Like in any scenario, building a powerhouse prepared for long-term triumphs takes time and, and patience but when correctly executed the journey that follows will most likely be well worth the wait. Seeing everything thus far 
all of the changes have instilled a sense of positivity that was long gone for a while being a supporter of this club think about the mentality of waiting to see something before getting our hopes up it's pretty cynical isn't it oh yeah that originates from the state of distrust Knowing that as fans, we couldn't rely upon the ownership, and to be honest, if it was just the Glazers, we still can't tell it. Also, the previous iteration of senior leadership and so on, to provide us with a, a product of entertaining and successful football. We couldn't rely upon them to execute basic actions like clear and concise communication. Early signs tell us that the Ineos regime is working to eliminate that sense of caution and reinstate the trust that had been eradicated slowly and in a destructive manner when footballing departments were solely controlled by the Glazer family and who they chose to employ. By no means am I saying the only way is up. Many things or projects speaking in the theme of this video need to take place in order to rediscover the club many associate Manchester United to be. But something tells me for now that we or on the right track ladies and gentlemen have your say on on this video the the theories that we've brought up me and and cm put a little bit of research into uh -oh. this one so if you want more videos like this hit the like button also tell us in the comments ladies and gentlemen subscribe if you're new share to your friends and frenemies and until the next time we'll see you lot sinner bit yeah!